are kind of going through some problems uh, we have operating the CDN. Uh, I don't outline any specific solutions. We have a few ideas. I think there's definitely overlap with a lot of the self-service stuff, maybe some of the config versioning things. Uh, so kind of looking for feedback and trying to make sure everybody is aligned and moving in similar directions. So Cisco has kind of two customers for our product. We have uh, a set of customers who Cisco runs the CDN for as a managed service called Cisco Operate. And then we have customers who buy traffic control from us and run it themselves, so self-operate. Uh, and we wanted to keep the experience of changing delivery services, adding new servers, as easy and simple as possible for our self-operate customers because they're not necessarily really detail, uh, not really familiar with all of the details of how to use traffic control in terms of I have to go queue updates, I have to snapshot CR config, and uh, the exact magic dance all of those operations have to be done in. Um, so we're hoping to make it a little bit easier. Uh, we have a bunch of proprietary stuff right now, uh, but we want to start moving away from that a little bit. And we also want to have our proprietary stuff in the short term work better with traffic ops because our customers do end up using both of the both of the tools, director and traffic ops at the same time. So uh, from our customers perspective, what we want them to be able to see is what the state of any configuration changes. Um, I think the best example for that is a modification or adding or deleting a delivery service. Where does that change stand right now in being deployed through the network? Is it something that's just in traffic ops? Is it on a few caches? Is it on all caches? Uh, is it on my monitors and my routers? These are things you can't really see today. The queue updates flag is kind of a weak proxy for that, um, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later, some of the shortcomings there. Uh, we also don't know when the traffic router or traffic monitor has picked up a new configuration. Uh, we can go look at the API, the debug API on Traffic Monitor, and see if it's got the latest CR config, but that doesn't really tell us what's running on the routers. I checked, I couldn't find the similar API on the routers, so it, it wouldn't be hard to add. Um, what if we could have something a little bit simpler in that? Yeah, too? so it's not easy to do. There is a timestamp where you can say last, you can get the timestamp from the last config load, so you can kind of infer what yeah. happened, but it's not anything that's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah, so there's two timestamps. There's last config check yeah. and the traffic router last config right. load timestamp. We could easily drop that timestamp into that same struct. Right, yeah, yeah. Now back up to your previous bullet point of how to see ORT builders. Yeah. So I did some work on ORT and actually managed to get the output of ORT into InfluxDB. The plan was to take that information and then an applicable link in traffic ops to pull up the last two runs or as many as was in InfluxDB. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in that, I could put that out there. It's a few versions behind what the current ORT is, but I could put that out there so maybe somebody could take the time to merge it. I just never had the time to finish the UI changes to actually get it to where you could actually see it. The, the work for the ORT side is well along. What is it? What does it put into Influx? The output of the run from ORT, like success or failure, or yeah, the whole thing, the console, the whole run of the output. So if you were running into report mode, for example, yeah. So the ORT run creates a sync DS, and you can run it in report mode. What right. we had done, what I had done, was um, created two run two cron jobs, I took the sync DS that runs now, right. and then also created a report run cron job as well, and took both of the outputs of those and put them into InfluxDB, so you can pull it up. The, the eventual goal is so that you can pull it up and see the last run. Yeah, okay. No, that could definitely be useful. And it was also setting up <coughs> flat, right? Like success or power of the, how many lines is actually modified during report versus sync DS? Correct. So we added a column to our 
traffic ops for the ORT, it, was it added or was it, is that already there? I think um, we got added. Yeah, so we added a line in the server checks to see the ORT so you could actually see the number yeah, of failures. that is there. Yeah. Yeah. There's no ORT check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, but it's on SyncDS. This one was actually a report because it was actually doing different things. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For example, if you're... Oh, the SyncDS. We yeah. added a report. Column. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's definitely good. But we've definitely seen some cases where even though the config files are on the cache, yeah. that's not necessarily what's running. That's true. On SSL. SSL. <laughs> yeah. It's so I, Jeff knows more about the exact cases, but I, you know, if we're going to fix this, it would be good to fix it where you can actually see what's running on traffic server. Rob's going to fix all this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Rob are going to have a conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think all, again, all of this stuff, so Service plan we have doesn't do this. Yeah. Timestamps will make it much, much easier. Right. Yeah. And I think tr I think actually self service will do a lot of it, whether it shows it or not. Yeah. Is but it will be really easy to show it because it's going to have to know. Right. We'll have to know what configs are on yeah. the log, what configs are on the edge, and you'll just have to expose that. Right. Yeah. Oh, and for the last bullet point here. Um, I mentioned there's some, you know, queue updates a little weird right now. It'll queue all the updates for all the changes on the server. So I know right now you have to um, basically say to all the other operators, don't touch anything. I'm going to make a delivery service change. Wait for it to go all the way through the system before somebody else makes some, another change. The report mode doesn't show you all of the differences? You've run into situations where report mode for ORT doesn't show you all the differences? Because the files are actually on the cache, yeah. so or it just compares against the file on disk, not what's actually running in traffic server. Oh, okay. So we had this issue where we had the wrong private key for the public key, and somehow whatever was given out of traffic server was not what we were expecting. Right. And even if you would fix it, like the files would not be being sent out or something. So somehow traffic line dash x didn't pick up the last change. Yeah. And it's I mean it's probably a traffic server bug. Yeah. But it's still good to protect ourselves against stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So I, I would add that, I mean, if we're really looking at it for simplicity from the operator's perspective, it would be really nice to be able to diff what's there right in the UI and you want to come back directly. Instead of having to either go down to the system and look at the files, run the org report, or, or deal with the stuff. Because even, even today, when you run the org, it comes back and says error, 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 but these things aren't really errors. So it might be difficult yeah. to handle that part. Yeah, that's the stuff. That's one of the things that I fixed in my version. It, the, the errors were that are being reported as errors today are actually informational messages. Right, exactly. So I changed them to informational <laughs> and only the And I wasn't reporting the, the, report the, the, the actual yeah, errors to life. So Oh, um, <laughs> 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 I can. Um, yeah, I can give you the ORT changes, but I never got around to making the UI changes. So the that's why I never. That's why I never did a PR. What did these guys I understand why whoever wrote this did what they did because they wanted to see those messages wherever they find the report. Technically, they're not error messages; they're informational messages, and they needed to be bumped, they needed to be bumped up. So, from the perspective of the operator, I think in, in a perfect world, what they'd be able to see is for every delivery service change they make, how far out into the network that change has made it. You know, is it on? specifically which servers has it been on at this point. Um, and also maybe you want to look at it from the perspective of a server. So if I've got this edge cache, you know, is this edge cache up to date? Um, that's probably going to be a while before we get there. You know, I think Rob said yesterday three years for self-service. So I'm going to hold him to that. Um, multiple years. Yeah, multiple years. Okay, four years. 
uh, to set the expectations. Yeah. So exactly. So uh, shorter term, even just not knowing exactly what delivery services uh, versions are and what caches, but just knowing like if it's up to date uh, would probably be good enough. So like a, a boolean yes or no, this is this configuration change is done. And if it's no and it stays no for a long time, well then somebody has to go and like, do some digging and, and troubleshoot and see where it's actually made it and where it hasn't. Um, I don't think the update pending flag is enough to meet that right now. One, it's not on the traffic routers and traffic monitors. Um, two, it doesn't really indicate that like a change is waiting to be made. You can set the flag on a cache even when it's up to date. Um, or you can make a change and forget to set it. I don't know if that, that ever happens, but it's kind of a theoretical problem. So are you thinking about, like, don't, I guess, don't, don't let me steal your thunder if you still have to go? Well, some that's... Sort of time stamp. Yeah, exactly. So the solution that's would be, the yeah, so it would be collecting, you know, the timestamp of the last configuration, a, a cache, and the, and the TM and TR got. Um, and our, our rate of configuration changes, I think, is a lot slower than Comcast. So if we just said something like, you know, after five minutes, we're not up to the latest configuration change. Um, that's something we could raise an alarm on. I think that might not work well for you because you constantly have configuration changes going in, so your logic might have to be a little bit different on, on where you raise an alarm. Yeah, I think in the, the other thing we might look at doing is um, Hopefully timestamp would be enough, but just to double check the integrity of the configuration files. Uh, and maybe, I didn't know the whole SHA-512 thing was in there, but um, we could also have traffic ops pull caches or caches report back checksums of the files back to traffic ops to make sure they match what was generated. So the SHA-512 is just a transmission thing. It doesn't have any guarantee that it's valid. And yeah. That, you know, you set parameters and those are gonna translate to correct uh, config files. It's just right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think, you know, I don't know if all the parameters are in record stop config. Yeah, we don't write all those config files to disk on the traffic ops. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, might, they may change if we can update them. Yeah. Well, no. We just, it would have to be in the community. We specifically got away from writing those files. No, I know, but there doesn't mean snapshot thing. Well, because we're talking about every user, and we need to adjust and know which cache you need to all which snapshot. Yeah. So eventually, what we're going to do is eventually with self service, we'll have all the timestamps and stuff, and it'll be implicitly generating when you ask for the latest config, it'll implicitly give you the latest safe config. Right. But it would be really easy to add. Some kind of endpoint or code to say you need to configure for this timestamp if you you know want that to come there. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think the the last part. This is my last slide, by the way. Um, the last part of this, which is a little orthogonal to seeing um, how far into the network your config change has made it, is being able to see the running configuration on a server. Um, this is something we can do with our legacy product, and is something you can do with every Cisco router out there, like show running. Uh, so we get a lot of requests for it. And that's basically trying to create some display or, or some view of what the current active configuration is uh, on a traffic server. Uh, so we're thinking about you know, a script or something like that. Uh, that'll either go call some traffic server APIs or call traffic line um, or hit the traffic router APIs and create some type of report about what delivery services it knows about and, and what the, the parameters are on that cache, or that TR. Does that help in memory? Is that something that... I mean, you have ASTATs up there. You can get some of the remap stuff out of there. Yeah. So some, there's it's everything, right? It's some of the remap stuff, all the parameters, but then also like what plugins are active for a given remap. <coughs> and you don't trust the config files, like you said. Yeah. Like, well, there, there well, should be a way to see it, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. So this would be something where initially the user has to log in SSH to the cache, run a command to see it, um, but then eventually maybe you know we build an API or something like that, so all this stuff can come back via ASTATs or or some other plugin. Yeah. 
So you know how uh, the traffic ops, the real version, you can actually get the config file? I know it's not accurate anymore because of the different API endpoints. The one is using config, the, you know, the big ones with new API. Oh, really? Yeah. Did, did, did. Derek didn't That's update that? No, because it was dead code. What? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Because that to I you. Mean, we could, I guess, but <laughs> traffic portal gives you the API endpoint. Jeremy just showed me, and yeah. it's actually pretty yeah. darn awesome. Uh, it doesn't really tell you what's on the cache, though, when it falls down. Yeah, no, but the, the reason, result of that API. The reason, the reason I didn't update it was because when you run that, it generates everything, yeah. which you know, I intended to replace it with a button that sent you the API. I just never did. Did you, uh, did you delete those old files? Or exactly. do we still have like two config files at the end? Yeah, we have a lot of different. I'm sure we yeah. have to. <laughs> Derek? Briefing. <laughs> you know what's worse than doing stuff in Perl? Yeah. Having two versions of it in Perl. No, we need two in Perl and one in Go. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. It's removed for Oh, man. I mean, it's something that, you know, if this thing could be available, then you could do a diff between the generator one and yeah. the one you got on this, right? Yeah. Right. Nice thing to have. Right. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know exactly when this happens. This is just something we started talking about in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, obviously, whatever we decide on, we'll, we'll bring it to the dev list first yeah. before we build anything. I think, I think for traffic server, it'd be cool if you could get the running config, like do show run, yeah. and, and not, you know, display the files that are on the on the disk because you don't know if they're actually loaded. Right. But actually do a show run from memory. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know, maybe there is something like that. If you, if you run a plugin, would you have access to those things from a VTS? What's that? I would have access right to those data points from a plugin out of VTS. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole configuration and stats system is it's all available in plugins. So. Yeah, and the, re the reporting in a stats is all about counters. Yeah. Um, right. But I think we want to add configuration yeah. information yeah. into that. I agree. Not any stats, though. Not any stats. No. Because yeah. we're trying to get away from these stats. Yeah, I don't even know if this would be stats over HTTP yeah. or prompt. Maybe something else, depending yeah, on, maybe on just how it works. Maybe a different plugin, like what I'm so, yeah. so there is a, a traffic, the traffic CTL. Right now, you can get the status you can find the last time it reloaded the config yeah. files, and there's also gets and dips. And Okay. Yeah. But can you get like the the active uh, the active so, green yeah. maps and those stuff? Well, traffic CTO is in there since five, but I don't know if, if, when they added this stuff. So this is on the seven block right now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so we might even, maybe we even end up building like another API around traffic puddle or something like that. Traffic cuddle. What you call it? Yeah. What do you call traffic it? Traffic cuddle. I like cuddle. Cuddle. <laughs> yeah. Sys cuddle. Traffic cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you are going to use it. Okay. Or if you report remotely and get the output, right? Writer's code. In the short term, I can do that with that. It's not going to go over to me. Yeah. There's a direct thing about traffic CTO, like different than a file somewhere. So you can get to different files. We want custom scripts. Okay. So that was all I had. Just a short one. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Pretty clear, like.